Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's Six Sigma newsletter is Is Six Sigma all about mathematics? And if it's not, what does the Demaic cycle look like when it's not about mathematics? So we're going to use the Demaic cycle to kind of explain this, but is Six Sigma all about maths? Now obviously the phrase there, Six Sigma, I mean Sigma in itself is, is about standard deviation, so it kind of suggests it's all about mathematics. But Six Sigma is not about mathematics. I wish we could change this name. Let's call it World Class Engineering because that's what Six Sigma is. It is World Class Engineering, World Class Technical Problem Solving and therefore it's not about maths. Six Sigma is actually about physics and that's very different. When Isaac Newton coined the phrase, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It's one of the laws of physics. There's no maths in that phrase, is there? Now I'm sure there's some maths that you might want to use if object A to object B and you want to know what's going to happen. There'll be some mathematics then. But actually, the principle, the laws of physics, they have no mathematics in them. And it's very similar with Six Sigma. So I'm going to show you what the Demaic cycle looks like when we're looking at mathematics light. And I'm going to show you what the Demaic cycle looks like when we get mathematics heavy. Because there is times when you need to bring out some heavy hitting mathematics to be able to understand your process. But this is not the centerpiece necessarily of what Six Sigma is about. So we're going to take a look at the two Demaic cycles with maths and without maths. So we're going to look at two Demaic cycles. We're going to use Demaic to make the point here. So we're going to look at Demaic cycle one. Which is without the maths. And we're going to look Demaic cycle two, which is with the maths. Now, the centerpiece of both of these and the centerpiece of Six Sigma, it's not mathematics. The centerpiece of Six Sigma is this thing. It's physics. You have a process, and it's process thinking, by the way, as well as physics. You have a process. You want the process to make money. You want it to make as much money as possible. What do you have? Well, you have a series of inputs and of course a series of outputs where hopefully you are trying to please the customer. So you have inputs and outputs and that is always the centerpiece of Six Sigma. It's about physics. Now the maths might be able to help us, but there'll be times when I can do this mathematics light. So let's take a look at Demaic 1. Let's take a look at what the problem looks like when we're going to use Demaic 1, light mathematics. And it's going to look like this. You are going to have a capability in your process that looks like this. In other words, you have a problem with noise in your process. Your process is too variable. And what we have to do is squeeze this distribution in. If we looked at it on a, just a straight graph, if we put tolerances, upper tolerance, lower tolerance, what would this thing look like? Process would be bouncing around all over the place, going above and below the tolerance. This is a problem with noise. It's not a problem with signal. Now when you have this problem, basically what's going on, you have too many of these inputs out of control. Too many of these inputs are being allowed to move around. 
and all of this variability is causing this problem here. It's often caused, called common cause variability. They say, by the way, 90% of your problems are like this. And by the way, it will take you three months to fix this problem. And essentially, what are we going to do? We are going to fix the input variables on this side of the process and we are going to use the laws of physics to our advantage. Now, is there any maths involved in this? Pretty much no. There's a few simple statistical graphs here, but it's very light, light load of mathematics. Just a couple of simple diagrams. Once I see that I have a problem with noise, what's the tool I'm going to pull out the box? For here, look, define, measure, analyze. What's the analysis I'm going to do? I need to analyze all the inputs and their current state of control. So my weapon of choice to do this is not mathematics at all, because I just want to use physics. It's the cause and effect diagram. Okay, so what we're gonna have here, then machine method, Material. What am I going to put on this thing? Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to identify all the input variables to my process and their current state of control. And where they are not controlled, which means to fix them, by the way. It doesn't mean to drive them like a car. You have to stop the operators driving your processes like a car, give them a sheet of settings get them to dial those settings in and then smack the dials off with a hammer so that they never move again. That is what process control means and the best companies in the world are brilliant at that. So we're going to identify all the variables on this thing and where there's an opportunity to put additional fixes in, that's what we'll do. Now, is there any maths there? None whatsoever. It's physics. Inputs control outputs. That's, that's the end of it. That's one of the laws of physics that you're using to your, your advantage in Six Sigma. And here, that's what, that's what the analysis looks like in that case. Obviously the measure looks like some simple graphs and a CPK analysis or a histogram. It's very simple mathematics. Very simple indeed. It's what every engineer should be using anyway. So it shouldn't be heavy lifting. Now this is known as going from chaos To control. It takes three months and needs no mathematics at all. It needs process controls. Job done. So let's take a look at this thing. Now this thing is not about chaos to control. This thing is about control to excellence. So this is domain two. Now this control to excellence. Just occasionally I do get projects that go straight to this level but it's very rare. Control to excellence, on the other hand, is a different problem. We are not trying to get the noise under control. Typically what we have is a process that looks like this. We have a problem with signal. We wish to understand how to move that process onto the target. And of course, this is a mathematical relationship because if I'm going to grab a dial on a machine, speed, temperature, pressure, whatever it happens to be, I'm going to wind on it, I'm going to put an extra two bar on the, on the process in order to center this thing. Well now this is a mathematical relationship. I want to know mathematically. I don't want to guess. I don't want the operator to give it a nudge and go, is it there? Give it a nudge. Is it there? I don't want that nonsense. We want some maths out of the box and we're going to use some things Things that you, you learned at school, to be honest. Things like this. Y equals mx plus c. Where x, by the way, is the input. Y is the output. This type of, this type of mathematics is what we're going to use. So now, analyse here. This is going to need some heavy-duty mathematics to understand that. Now, I'm not going to pull the cause and effect diagram out of the box here. Which tool am I going to pull out of the box? 
I'm going to pull a big heavy hitter called Design of Experiments. D O E. Because this is the fastest way to generate this knowledge. It's the fastest way to find the best settings as well. So, for example, maybe your process is already sitting in control, slap bang in the middle of the tolerance, exactly where you want it. But unfortunately, you've got everything turned up full. Temperatures up full, speeds up full, pressures up full. But you want, you'd love to hit this target with cheaper settings. Faster, better, lower energy, etc. Cheaper material, maybe. DOE is brilliant at finding cheapest settings in the complex world of millions and millions of combinations that could be over here on your inputs. So now I get heavy hitting mathematics out. But this is round two. Often this is round one. Chaos to control is round one. Control to excellence is round two. Round one needs no mathematics, just the laws of physics. Round two, control to excellence. Now I'll pull the mathematics out of the toolbox. If you want to know how to do this, give me a call or drop me a line. I hope to hear from you soon.